Comedy is a difficult thing to talk about because it happens to be so subjective. There is not one joke that every single person will laugh at and get. I'm addressing this statement not to pick a fight with Garnt. I mean, hey, look over there, I was just in a podcast with the guy, he's pretty cool. But because it's an incredibly common idea that gets floated around the anime community, and one that's somewhat puzzling. In fact, the first comment I ever received was on a breakdown of Osamatsu-san's comedic appeal to me, expressing some skepticism over the premise of the post itself because of how subjective comedy apparently is. We as a community are slowly coming around to the idea that you can't judge art objectively. A textbook piece in every way, with a checklist of features to curry favor with judges. That critiques and thoughts are necessarily going to come from one's own subjective perspective, and Gigak himself has made a video championing this cause. But there's still an instinct to deem some things as more subjective, or even too subjective, to discuss in a critical capacity. What about comedy is inherently so much more subjective than genres like action or drama, than attempts at eliciting heartwarming sensations or exhilaration, that it can't be effectively analyzed, critiqued, or examined? Ironically enough, this Gigguk video promises such a breakdown in its title, and does indeed proceed to provide it in the rest of the video, making these opening statements all the more puzzling. Newsflash. Not only is there not one joke that every single person will laugh at, there is not one anime that every single person will enjoy. As this man offering up his objective review of FMA Brotherhood to cut through the fanboyism makes clear. For any given person, some jokes will make them laugh and others won't. They'll find some comedies humorous and others lacking, and this isn't through some strange, indefinable force. Maybe I can't appreciate it. My heart is like clouded or something. There are differences between those two groups, aspects of them that cause them to fail or succeed for this individual, and with enough reflection and insight, what exactly makes comedy appeal to them is something that can be determined. The issue, I believe, is that we simply haven't developed a sufficient habit of doing so, and as a result, people by and large aren't, instead falling back upon the it's too subjective line to hand wave any such analysis. This isn't particularly unusual. I'm sure many of you have experienced something similar when discussing media with... Ugh. Normies. People who aren't particularly experienced or interested in breaking this stuff down, and whose critical lexicon will as a result consist mostly of generalities. The story is good, the characters are fun, without attempts to go into detail on by what means that goodness and fun is achieved. Shut up! Like your opinion means anything to me! Everyone just has to run their mouth! If you're in a position to stumble across this video, you've probably got more interest in such discussions, and at the very least enjoy listening to other people break down how a series can go about establishing effective characterization and the such. But now I kinda get it. And yet in these same circles, there's a level of laziness, ignorance, something that leads people to assume doing so for comedy would be a vain endeavor. For some fairly brief videos showing such an analysis in action, you can check out Second Look's breakdown of how Interview with Monster Girls' visual humor worked, and Digibro's video on Sakamoto Deska. Both of these videos touch upon their respective series in a more broad sense as well, since, as Gigguk noted in his own video here, effective comedy is often built off of a solid general foundation. But I think that makes them all the better as tools for introducing yourself to the idea of analyzing comedy, since you can build off of elements of anime you're already familiar with thinking about critically. Of course, as much as I enjoy shouting out other content to make my points for me, I think it's only fair that I put my money where my mouth is here and offer up some comedy analysis of my own as well. Let's do the rather controversial series My Yoiga. This anime in particular is interesting because it was so odd in the construction of its comedy that it did actually encourage some degree of an analytical approach to it from a good number of people, as they tried to figure out what the hell is going on. The reverse side of that coin is that the discourse surrounding it was still rather lacking, because of this aversion to critically discussing comedy. Mayoiga's style of humor is rather unconventional, so breaking it down is not in service of getting people to enjoy it, but rather to show why the people who do enjoy it did. While it certainly began to drag a bit as the series went on, this opening episode, nay, this opening scene, does a fantastic job of laying out the humor of this series. We open on a pair of headlights, carving out a small slice of the darkened road being driven along through a heavy rain. Very stereotypical tense music, driven by a percussion line and thick electronic sounds, playing as we hear what seems like a rather cultish introduction being given, littered with a bunch of religious allusions and praising these people as special ones to be saved from this corrupt world. We then cut to the interior of the bus, which has a dramatically different tone. <laughs> Feeling more akin to a field trip than the serious mood the music and previous atmosphere would prepare you for. 
After a pair of fairly straightforward introductions, things start to get weirder. We've got a woman going by the name Soy Latte, and then someone introducing themselves via rap verse. And interspersed with more fairly unremarkable introductions, we get someone with an eye patch decrying this shitty world and warning that if you get too close to him, you'll get frostbite. Without breaking its outward seriousness, the show then proceeds to have an argument between three characters as to who should get to use the name Yuna, with them legitimately and without irony putting forth reasons as to why they have a particular right to this online handle over the others. At this point, tension is getting built up, not in the way Mayoiga seems to be attempting to do so, by creating a legitimately dark intense atmosphere, but more so through a curiosity as to what exactly is going on here. There have been no real winks or nods to the camera, nothing to explicitly suggest this premise is being played in any other way than straight, and yet we've got a bus full of people ranging from totally unremarkable to eccentric to seemingly insane, and no idea how we're supposed to take that. After some speculation about their destination that puts us back into serious escape from society mode, we transition right back to the school trip vibe with a somewhat morbid sing-along about an unlucky hippopotamus. The tone here just gets more and more muddled, the two extreme ends of it mixing in the form of a very typical school trip style game, only about torture devices, going dark again with a rather trippy dream sequence, to the point where an argument about the bus driver making a clicking sound with his tongue escalates into him accelerating to suicidal speeds as he rants about how he can't afford a boiled egg to top his ramen with. This is already pretty hilarious in its absurdity alone, but what elevates it is how it builds off of the backbone of the series, its massive, strange cast of characters. The natural result of putting this many maladjusted people together in one bus is attempted suicide over the fact this guy can't afford an egg for his ramen. Is a kid giving his speech about adults are evil people who can't be trusted and will try to kill you as he starts to beat up the driver? Is this entire scene, backed by dramatic tense strings and resounding chimes, being resolved by a girl throwing up all over that driver, diffusing all this tension for the time being? That barfing is off-screen, it isn't a lowbrow, ew, gross, punchline, it's the complete and utter undercutting of this manic procession of events. This is the essence of what forms the core of Mayoiga's comedy, unhinged series of events playing out in a manner that actually makes sense considering the group of people that's been brought together, an amusingly erratic tone that leaves us guessing as to what exactly is supposed to be going on, and a constant undercutting of itself, be it through those incredibly odd but naturally resulting character interactions, from the near constant stream of varying types of quips and vague philosophical platitudes, to a tense conversation about what to do next getting derailed as they spend a full minute trying to remember the name of the guy who just fell off a cliff before settling on calling him ass. Or through blatantly incompetent direction, like putting a pole in between the camera and the face of the guy dramatically expressing his concerns about being killed in his sleep by one of the insane people around him. And to me, it was an absolute riot. Is this still subjective? For certain, but again, not any more so than a given narrative or visual preference would be. One element supposedly specific to comedy that fuels this idea of its subjectivity is the concept of cultural barriers. The idea that, as an outsider to Japanese culture, you simply won't be able to fully appreciate their humor, and this concept as it gets used is often rather poorly thought out. Nozaki-kun continues my belief that comedy anime is usually best watched in the language that you are most fluent in. Their sense of humor functions differently from mine, for instance, so I would have to get into their shoes in order to understand the entire picture. Watching Nozaki-kun made me realize that while it falls under the romantic comedy genre and its storyline generally revolving around Chiyo's unrequited love and mishaps, it's not really the shipping that matters, but rather watching the friendship the two manage to forge with each other. For example, while Arkata's experience of not getting Nozaki-kun's prioritization of the calm and rom-com when watching the series subbed is of course totally valid as his own subjective takeaway, his extrapolation from that experience of comedy anime usually being best watched in one's native language is highly suspect. His original video on that anime is infamous specifically because there was a sizable backlash from the many fans of the show who had in fact gotten it, who, in spite of the Japanese humor apparently functioning differently from theirs, were able to step into those shoes and understand, if not the entire picture, then at least enough of it to get the basic dynamic that was being laid out. This is the danger of claiming a piece of humor is intrinsically inaccessible. You risk it simply being a case where you just don't enjoy the joke. Or just don't get it because you're too stupid. This wasn't merely a crowd of weebs flocking to the series either, as it had such a large fan base that it must have encompassed some more casual viewers as well. And in fact, I can guarantee that Nozaki-kun was free enough from a Japanese cultural context for casual viewers to get the joke, because I was one such viewer back when the series aired, having seen relatively few anime and certainly very few comedies at that point. 
There are absolutely instances where humor leans upon references to Japanese culture in a way that would make it difficult for your average Western viewer to appreciate the full scope of that humor. But by using that excuse so often, in cases where it so clearly doesn't apply, you start robbing such a designation of any meaning it could have. So don't be afraid to dive in and start thinking about comedy more critically. It is subjective. Welcome to every other aspect of anime as well. Unless you think analysis, review, and critique are rendered totally pointless and invalid by that fact, you can proceed to start looking into comedy just like you do characters and art and animation, and start appreciating what exactly makes us laugh, or fails to. If someone wants to leave it at a statement as simple as, I found it funny, that's totally fine, but that doesn't mean that's all you can do when discussing comedy. And in my eyes at least, it's a subject interesting enough to warrant exploring in greater depth. If you found this video interesting enough to warrant it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Joining Sam, EasyMe69, Remy Goldschmidt, Joji Matthews, Culver James Kamai, Chris Wagner, Teencho37, Mathwiz97, Zach Penrith, Greg Greenwell, Cherry Boy Writer, Car Keys, Valkion, Mickey Stopwatch, Akai Kuroba, Justin Thompson, Kieran Rice, and all of my other patrons in helping to enable and improve this content.